Good morning, Redneck. Have you been blessed so far? Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Now, come go with me to the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. That shouldn't be hard to find. We're going to start at the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. From the New King James Version, the King James Version, we hear these words. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness so ends the reading of God's word but never the power contained therein if you would go back to the third verse and we hear these words and God said let there be light and there was light From the text heard in our reading, I ask you to consider a message entitled, Let There Be Light. Say that with me. Let there be light. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. There are two books of the Bible that contains information that is very deep and beyond our understanding. So we do our best trying to understand it and trying to speak to it. One of the books is the book of Revelation. The other is Genesis. Now why that is, is because one talks about the beginning and one talks about the end of everything. The beginning of everything and the end of everything. It comes to a point in which you can't know. You won't know until you get to one of those positions. And I think what will happen when you get to that position, you will realize that all there is, was, and forever will be is God. So I'm going to do my best to try to start in the beginning because that's what the first words of the first chapter of the first book in the Bible starts with. It says, in the beginning. Now, what does it mean by the beginning? It's the beginning of the beginning. And if you have a relationship with God, God has no beginning. God always was. And that's a concept that's very hard for us to understand. To understand that God always is and was. We don't have the words to explain God. We don't have the intellectual capacity to understand God. 
we think we do, and sometimes we act like we do, but the reality of it is we do not. We cannot comprehend something that's incomprehensible. We cannot understand in the beginning as Moses is writing this down to give to the children of Israel. They were asking him questions. Where did this all begin? And he said, God said, in the beginning, when there was no such thing as time, time started when God decided it would be time. That ideal of time, we're all caught in it. We're wrapped in it. We can't change it. We can't modify it. We can't do anything with time. Time is going to be for us. But for God to live outside of time, that concept alone is too much for us to truly understand. And God is so much in control of time. At one time, he took time and moved time backwards. Because that's how God can manipulate time, which we're caught into. In the beginning, before there was a beginning for humanity, there was just God. Then God said, he is going to create, and this creation is not like we think. Creation, it's not like God grabbed something and started molding stuff together. He thought it and spoke it and it happened. In the beginning, God created. Now listen, it says, the heaven Singular, not plural. In the beginning, when time started, God created the heaven and the earth. And in this particular point, it does not indicate that there is any other planets being built. Was there? Could there have been? Yeah, maybe not. All we know is Moses wrote down that in the beginning, God created the heaven, singular, and plural, earth. In the beginning, the heavens is now where we all, in Revelation, now have to go back to. We have to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth... This little blue marble that we live on was without form. But I thought the earth was round. I thought the earth was a planet among the solar systems. But the word says that it was without form and it was void, meaning that there was nothing there. How do you create something that is nothing? Now, somehow or another, Moses wrote this so the readers might understand, so the readers of Moses' writings must have had an understanding of what something could be both formless and void. Or else it wouldn't make sense to the reader. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formed and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. Wait a minute, I thought we said it was formless. I thought we said it was void. But now we're talking about the deep. What's deep? Could it be that the universe, and we use such a small, insignificant word as deep? You know how massive the universe is? Maybe Moses is trying to get the people to understand that this is a much bigger thing than our little tiny brains can really hold. So he uses a word that we can understand. He says, you know what? It's really deep. The universe is really deep. Then he says something. He says, the spirit of God. Now, wait a minute. We keep having conversations about Jesus the Son God the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
But even in the day when it first started, Moses understood that God had a spirit. He said the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. Now, all of a sudden, we got a picture of total darkness, some kind of formless, voided anomaly in the middle of a darkness that's beyond understanding. Picture that with me, if you could. Give you a moment to wrap your mind around that concept. And then all of a sudden, God speaks. Let there be light. Boom! Light appears. Now, we say, well, I don't know if that's true. But as scientists have already discovered that the entire universe started with a big bang. But yet we can't believe what Moses is writing. Or there are some people who don't believe what Moses is writing. But God spoke. Bang! It happened. Let there be light. And out of the darkness, light came. And then the the, the cool thing about God is, I, I like the way they put it. It says, God looked at the light and said, that's good. They're pretty good. So God created light. Now here's the thing. I was wondering if light and darkness is compatible. And if there was nothing but darkness and now God all of a sudden created light, did they blend? Did they mix? How did they work? All of a sudden we read it in the text. It says, He separated light from dark. Light from darkness. But is there still darkness? Yes. So how does light and dark work? Now, if we read this again, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, And the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, and that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. There are seven ands in that statement. The number seven is usually illustrated from the idea of completeness. Not lucky seven, just the number seven. There are seven things that occur. That means there is a completeness to it. The text tells us that God created the heavens and the earth and on, in six days and on the seventh day he rested. There are seven days in a week. There are seven deadly sins. There are seven wonders of the world. There are seven seas. There are seven continents. And of course, we're supposed to forgive one another 70 times. Completion. The forgiveness is for completion. The number of oceans is for completion. You need no more water. The number of continents But we said the Pangea was split when an asteroid hit the earth. But could that be true or could that just be the thumbprint of God that created seven continents? Are more continents growing or is that all there is? Do we have any more new water on earth? Is there any more new air? Is there any more new space? You see, the very things that we live off were God-given. We need water to drink, air to breathe. That's it. 
food to eat, which he placed on the continents. That's it. And it's all free. But man has a way of taking that which is free and making a profit. Because you can't even get air in your car tire without putting a quarter in that little machine. So why? Why, you ask, am I postulating so heavily on the number seven when we're here to talk about letting there be light? Well, there are seven distinguishable wavelengths of visible light, which can create up to a million different colors of light. Light is the perception of a color. When the wavelength of light reflects off of a thing, you see the color of that thing, but not the light reflecting off the thing you see. If we turn off these lights, there are no reflection of light, therefore you can't see anything, therefore you don't see color because the light is what reflects and brings you the color that you see. Light also serves other purposes. So God didn't give us light because he thought it was a good thing to say, let there be light. He had nothing else to do. He was just hanging around going, okay, well, let there be light. No, it gives us a purpose and a reason. Light allows us to see and perceive our surroundings. It's natural light from sunlight or artificial light from incandescent bulbs or, or lamps. Illumination is critical for our daily activities and navigation. Light is essential for the process of photosynthesis. It works on plants and trees and algae and bacteria, and all of that is responsible for giving us back the oxygen we need to breathe. It preserves and its present and absence of light affects our moods, whether we know it or not. Our circadian rhythm is wrapped up in what we believe to be the time we're supposed to get up and the time we're supposed to go to bed. That is one of the problems that airline pilots suffer from, who fly from west to east, because the sun goes from east to west, and that's called jet lag. Because it's not enough light or all they're getting is darkness. And it creates a problem in their sleep patterns which affects their health. Light has long been appreciated for its aesthetic value. And because I am the color that I am, I need light. Light has a profound impact on our daily lives our natural world, and our understanding of the universe. So as we shine light on Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, our reading this morning, we discover it resonates with our humanity and our history. In this verse, we discover a profound truth that speaks to our souls if we allow it to. It gives us guidance to our walk if we allow it to, and spiritual inspiration as we look to the light of God. We've already learned that God spoke and the universe burst into existence. God's very words created creative power, and the first thing recorded God saying is, let there be light. I believe God's intention was to bring illumination to the darkness and to establish a foundation upon which life could flourish. Just as God's word shaped the world, his words have the power to shape our lives today. The word of God is a beacon of light that illuminates our path and guides us through life's challenges. As African American young adults, we are the product of a rich history and legacy. God's light led us through the darkness of slavery. God's light led us through the darkness of Jim Crow. 
God's light led us through so many difficult situations in our lives. So when we embrace our divine purpose, we must remember that God's creative power completes us, fulfills us, and watches over us. The light of God is an incredible force that dispels the darkness wherever it may be found. We live in a world that is often plagued by injustice, inequality, and adversity. So it is crucial for us to remember that we are called to be the carriers of God's light. That's what we're here for to carry God's light to the darkness of the world. As a remnant of African-American young adults, we face and continue to face struggles and challenges while living in a world of darkness. Just as light triumphs over darkness, you too are called to overcome obstacles through the light of God that dwells in you. By standing firm in your faith, Seeking justice and promoting love and unity, you can become wavelengths of transformational hope. Remember, no matter how bleak or how dark your circumstances may appear, the light of God is within you is more powerful than any darkness surrounding you. People who live in darkness want you to live in darkness too. Haven't you heard misery loves? So what does darkness look like? Hmm? It's an abyss of ignorance. A deep ravine of wickedness. And an unseen hate for righteousness. Whenever one of those three things are around you, things in your world becomes darkened. Unrighteousness, and they hate you for being righteous. There are people right now today that don't like you and hate you for who you are because you claim to be a child of the king. Darkness can sometimes blind us from seeing God's will for us. It can stop us from seeing the good God is doing with us. It can even blot out the shining examples of the love of God that he is giving us. Sometimes we can't see what God is doing in our lives because we allow the darkness of this world to stop us from seeing who God is. And we start to focus and concentrate on all the bad things that are happening in our lives rather than the good things that God is trying to show us. And so we become doubtful and we become hateful and we become afraid because I don't see how we can do that. My, my, my darkness tells me that can't be done. I don't know anybody else in the world that can do that. Well, maybe that's because that's what darkness wants you to believe. But my God says he is the light of the world. Today's darkness has taken center stage and refuses to move because some of the children of God are staring at the darkness of light, life and can't find the switch to turn on the light of God in their lives. And that's what we're supposed to do now. Because we hold the light of God. It's like one candle lighting another candle. But we're holding our candle and our light because we don't want anybody else to, maybe they might blow it out. So we won't share our own light that we have, the power that's within us with our fellow man because we're afraid that we might lose it. 
So we're in darkness ourselves and we forget and forgive and don't forgive. And all we're doing is walking around in darkness. The Bible tells us that a blind leading the blind will both fall into a ditch. And that's because they can't see. They can't see that way. Darkness wants you to walk in fear. Darkness wants you to believe that you can't do what God has ordained you to do. Darkness tries to cover up God's will for your life with the doubt of the world. Darkness wants you to think that physical violence will stop you from being peaceful. Darkness even wants to attempt to blind you from the truth by telling you lies. Darkness will tell you, you can't get up from that. Whatever it is that life has knocked you down, you got to stay down. Darkness wants you to think you're done when you've only just begun. So the next time darkness darkens your doorstep, I want you to remember the message today and just say, let there be light. Amen. When it's dark and you can't see your way and you need to obtain the insight, wisdom, or the light of God that reflects the essence of God. Just stop and say, let there be light. When it feels like you are wandering in dark, dank places and you can't find your way out, just stop and say, let there be light. For the word tells us, that when you shine light into darkness, the darkness cannot comprehend your light. So when injustice happens in your life, let there be light. When people lie on you and lie to you, let there be light. When life disappoints you, when people disappoint you just say let there be light when your friends and family forsake you let there be light God's creation of light was first but more but more than that God's creation of light was intentional just as God spoke light into existence, he has spoken a unique purpose into your life. Each one of you possesses gifts and talents, passions, and the light of God that is meant to bring light and blessings to the world around us. Discovering and embracing God's divine light can become a journey of self-discovery. It can, it can be a petition in prayer or, or just simply seeking God's guidance. As a gathering of young adults, you carry within you the light of God that uniquely equips you to make the impact that's needed in this world. But you have to let your light so shine. Don't put it under a bushel or try to hide it because people think you extra or they think you just too religious. If God has given you something to share, share it. Do what God has called you to do. All I'm asking of you to do today 
is that whatever is happening in your life, right or wrong, good or bad, known or unknown, let there be light. This has been a word of God for the people of God, for the edification of God's kingdom.